um, there's a bigger view, right? Continuous testing and, and how this really fits into a continuous quality initiative. So, yeah, so I mean, for me, continuous testing is having all of your automation, performance, security, functional, all of it is automated, all of it's part of your pipeline. And of course, like UI mm -hmm. test automation has to be part of that. And how you, how you build your suite, how you integrate it with your pipeline is very important. And then being able to have a solid framework so that, you know, when it fails, it's failing for the right reason. Yeah. Uh, not failing for object issues or environment issues that needs to be able to handle all of that stuff. And that's the key. You know, what we see is people will say we do continuous testing. And what they really mean is our, our tests are triggered by our CI tool like Jenkins, mm -hmm. but they still have to have manual interaction to troubleshoot why tests fail yep. or even to look at the results to say, yes, it, I can keep going. Mm -hmm. And so being able, like this is where the testing pyramid and having good intelligence in your framework really matters yeah. because otherwise you're not going to get to continuous testing. And I know you're a big advocate for service virtualization. Yes. So how do you see that fitting in and what? how do you see organizations taking a technology like service virtualization and adopting it? Yeah, I mean, I, I am a, a big believer in service virtualization for a simple fact that you know, we need to be able to run these tests every day, multiple times a day. Mm -hmm. So if I'm building a microservice and I have uh, endpoints and backends that aren't available or haven't built their integration points. And service virtualization is a great tool to be able to automate and isolate my microservice mm -hmm. and then be able to use those tests when all of that integration is done. It, it's a key way for me to remove that impediment. Mm -hmm. Also with test data, you know, as big companies start to move faster, test data becomes a big issue for them. Yeah. And so, you know, if I'm testing a mobile app and the I need data from all of my backend systems. Service virtualization can be used to give the mobile app all of the data that it needs to be able to run all of your tests without having to go to the backend. Mm -hmm. The backend's not changing. I don't have to go test that. Yep. And so having, you know, to me, service virtualization is a key enabler. Uh, being able to set it up as a proxy in your pipeline, being able to run all of your tests at different stages and then being able to determine when it, you're going to go to the full endpoint or not. It's just a, a great tool. I, when I do my tutorials on DevOps and testing, I spend a lot of time talking about service virtualization. You have to get to some level of automation before service virtualization becomes useful, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, you just don't see all of the boulders in front of you mm -hmm. until you clear one at a time, mm -hmm. right? And so the first boulder people run into is just the ability to run their tests quickly. Yeah. And so now it's, it's looking at the framework's orchestrated and breaking down to use the pyramid and then okay now it, it becomes environments mm -hmm. it becomes data like you just unfortunately kind of have to step into that pond one one foot at a time and yeah. that's a similar experience that I have I mean um, once you once you start having these tests and you realize hey our mainframe has transaction limitations or we're a financial service company and when you put the transaction in it kills the data mm -hmm. and so being able to have service virtualization to be able to eliminate those constraints I mean, to me, it, it's it's a must-have if you were trying to get to continuous testing. What types of environment are you typically walking into, and what's typically the first two, three steps that you you take somebody down? So usually, uh, it's people have automation. Mm -hmm. They typically have more than a thousand plus automated regression scripts. They're agile, but they're not able to deliver on a on a on a sprint or daily basis. And so it's really helping them refactor their mm. regression suite, being able to do uh, more API and unit tests, mm -hmm. being able to strengthen the code in their framework so it can be more resilient and be part of a CI pipeline. And then it's bringing in tools like service virtualization and other, other enablers yeah. that are going to remove impediments, whether it's on teams, environments, on data, whatever. 